in Latin America, one widespread practice, I repeat, was to create a business emporium and then set up a media company, not to inform the public, but to protect the history. For example, for example, in Ecuador, the Isaiah family, owner of more than 200 companies, among the Cons Bank, and then they actually bought two national television broadcasting stations with open signal, one national TV station, service itself, three regional radio stations, and several magazines. It should be pointed out here that the bank went bankrupt as a result of fraud, and therefore they say from Ecuadorian justice and took ref refuge in Miami. Despite several requests for extradition filed by the Ecuadorian government, they continue there. And despite a huge media campaign attacking this valuable instrument of democracy, the Ecuadorian people vote to separate media activities from other economic activities. This has, be, has been already included in the current antitrust law project, which has already been in place here in the United States for more than 100 years. Your antitrust law has more than 100 years. We don't have any antitrust law yet. And we sent a few days ago the project to the National Assembly. This draft law, which is being discussed in Ecuador's Congress, establishes that any shareholder with more than 6% ownership share in a media company is forbidden to have any other type of business. This is aimed at democratizing ownership of the media and preventing conflicts of interest. Of course, it is also a blow at the very core of power structures in Ecuador. And as it is easy to verify, it is widely opposed by the media, who once again are playing a political role and trying to impose upon us a rule of opinion. Furthermore, to avoid this key contradiction of a public good managed by private, private for profit enterprises, where almost by definition private sector vested interests will prevail over social interests, it is necessary to diversify ownership of the media. Whereas in countries such as those in Europe, television was born as public television before our administration in Ecuador, there were not public media, neither print, nor radio, nor television. Today, we have all of them. I would like to insist on the word public, which is different from the word government. Nevertheless, the absence of balance between public and private media is still huge. We believe that the creation and consolidation of public media at the service of the citizens is a key milestone in the effort to give a voice to those who have been neglected, to draw up another type of information agenda which focuses on issues of genuine interest and to move away from the dictatorship of ratings and advertising. This has been a tremendous and difficult challenge because from the very start, the public media have been the target of unfair criticism, even a scorn and mockery by the private sector media. Obviously, the explanation for this arrogant attitude of many of the private media lies in the fact that they thought they could never be challenged in the kingdom of their own making. This is a very well-known uh, problem in economics. And as you well know, well, I am myself economist, yet I am still a good person. <laughs> and this involves what is known as market failure. To provide public goods is a market failure. Why? In other words, that market-driven businesses will not supply this good efficiently. Nevertheless, 
economics has hardly conducted any studies at all on the matter of supplying public goods from the standpoint of power, which involves a normative analysis of the regulatory framework, which some believe must not be considered by a science such as economics, which by mistreating mathematics, tries to pretend it is a hard sign. Supplying a public good such as information bestows power. The good or bad quality of information affects all of society. It impacts decision making by the public every single day. Perception of events, appraisals and opinions. It can contribute to the progress of history or it can impede action and thought, disorienting its subjects when it is urgent to promote the development of collective actions. That is why in supplying this good, regulations are required to prevent the abuse of power and foster greater citizen control of some, of, over something that can either help or severely undermine society. That is why it is urgent to have in Ecuador a new communication law, which from its sphere of influence can also help both democratize and demonopolize the media. 